In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the mats we built to mask out the text and finish the animation completely. So in the previous tutorial, we created a quite advanced setup of turning hexagons into rows with alternating left and right rows, which we then used to create a full scale mat that allowed us to select individual rings in this hexagon grid, the honeycomb pattern. Now we will use the, those mats to mask out the text, which will allow us to mask out parts of the animation and finally finish the whole thing altogether. So I have a basic composition set up. I'm going to drag in my mat layer into it. It's the one with all the controllers for the circle and stroke. If I open this, you can see it has four shapes the one we built before with the controller and this controller lets us select different parts of the rig to uncover different parts of the mat as you can see on the screen. Now if I duplicate this about five times and using the essential graphics settings I can fine-tune the selection for the uh, our hexagons. So what I want to do is basically with those controllers create this kind of selection, individual layers themselves. Okay, so what I just did was basically using the controllers we built in in Essential Properties to select different size of the circle radius and a stroke to fine tune the selection because all of those layers are their own individual layers, I use the FX console, which is this little pop-up menu, to take a screenshot and this automatically gets saved to my desktop. And then what I did was just basically importing the, the, all the mats as in the folder itself um, into the project and then just dropping them into the composition and turning off the original layers because I don't need them anymore. The performance uh, on my machine while I'm recording this tutorial is pretty, pretty slow. So this is just to speed up the process or in case you want to speed up the final rendering. Because if I select one of those mods, it's completely transparent except where the pixels were, you know, the ones we created. You can use the original composition we created for your animation if you further want to animate this selection. But in my case, I'm just going to use the images uh, generated with this well, mat generator in essence. And I color coded it according to the color of the layer. So it is easy for me to tell which layer does exactly what. We've got the individual selections, right? Individual rings. Now, what I want to do is build a um, sort of rig that lets me put a text layer in the middle and offset it around in the circle and do it again and again and again. And if I change the original text, the one in the middle, I want this to be reflected all over the place. So basically I have a basic composition, as you can see, which is the text itself. I put some expressions on the anchor point and the position, which looks like this. It's basically the expression keeps the anchor point dead in the center. And I put the expression on the position as well. So this way the layer is dead center in the composition, even if the text is really, really long, right? I did this because I want to keep this layer 100% in the center of the composition, no matter what. To be able to access the source, uh, or the source, the, the actual text itself, the property, uh, what I did was simply open this in Essential Graphics and drag the uh, text scale just, just over there. As you can see, it's already rotate, um, it's already referenced, so I'm gonna get this error. I did um, drag and rotation and the source text itself over there. So this way I can put this composition into another comp, duplicate a bunch of times and change the properties very easily while keeping the original source uh, text layer intact. So what happens next? Basically, uh, once you have this your source text property, uh, you have to drag it into another comp and we want to offset this text layer in different directions 
like so, but to do this procedurally, right? So we don't have to do it by hand, etc., etc. So I already did that, and I did explain this method in the previous tutorial, which I will link below. But to give you a quick overview, it's basically this original text layer dropped in into the composition, and I added a few expressions. So by creating an, a null, which is basically this little empty layer, I added two sliders to it. So one is offset, one is scale. Th those two sliders let me very easily control the offset of those layers in all, all directions. And as well, I can modify the text itself, like the scale. And because everything is linked to essential graphics uh, properties, this gets fed into the composition. So, so even if we increase the scale above 100 pixels, we still get sharp lines. There you go. So you get like proper scaling of the text itself, not the scaling of the composition. So once you drag in your text source layer into the comp, in this case, text array small, you have to add a few expressions to it. So this one, it's basically added to anchor point. And on my blog, I will explain those expressions in more detail uh, and you'll be able to just copy paste them easily. And at the same time, you'll be able to download this project file from Gamroad if you want to play around with it as well. By referencing the text offset uh, slider and adding it to the Y value of the anchor point, we can very easily like push one of those layers in Y direction. And by adding this expression to the rotation property, the text layer itself is being basically put on the circular array of sorts, and it takes account of how many layers are in the stack. At the same time, this minus two is really important because it tells every single text layer's uh, precoms, these guys, uh, to ignore those two layers themselves. So if I keep duplicating this, as you can see, we can keep stacking more and more text layers in this rig and the whole thing just gets automatically updated, uh, offset and correct angle, etc, etc. And again, because everything's referenced to those controllers, we can easily control all of them at once. And the most important is the text rotation. So on each layer, I simply linked the text rotation to the actual rotation of the layer itself and added the minus to it at the front. Without this expression, just basically, we would have all the layers facing the middle because the actual composition is being rotated around the circle and this is basically feeding into the essential graphics panel these properties and this is being automatically corrected. Now, the last thing what I did, I created a text layer itself. Now, this text layer is set as a guide, so it won't render outside of this composition at all. Now, the reason for this is if I just open the essential graphics property and open the source text property of this text layer, I can easily link the text that's being displayed to this text layer which we can use later on in another essential graphics panel. The reason for this is because if I open this composition in essential graphics and I try to drag this property, which is already essential graphics property, I can't, I get this warning because essential graphics properties are not supported in essential graphics panel. So we can't really create very flexible rigs. We have to use this as a kind of cheat code. But if I grab the source text itself, I can drop it here, update it, and this gets updated. There you go, it works like, like a charm. So I have to do this for every single layer, but since we have this rig set up, I can just delete this and duplicate it a bunch of times until I'm happy. So this is one of the arrays I have. This is called text array small. I created medium and a large one, which is exactly the same setup. The only difference is the number of layers so once you have your text arrays done and the main text composition, you just have to drag it into your um, hex animation main comp. So this is the comp which we will use to animate everything. Because we built all those essential graphics properties, I'm going to utilize them to scale the text itself 
to make sure it fits the initial, the smallest hexagon. In this step, I'm trying to use all those uh, layers we created, the, um, the text arrays, to scale them down and using the offset, basically fill up those um, hexagon rings with the text itself, like this, and do the same thing with medium and large and so on. This is basically just arranging your circular text arrays in a way that they fit into individual mats. And because I'm using the latest version of the Adobe CC, I can simply grab the track mat and link it to any layer I want. And we're pretty much done. Now the last step is to basically build the main word from all the words around it. And you can do this very easily by duplicating the main text, turning over the track mat so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to hide all the previous text layers we created. Now I'm going to uncover our mat and going to the essential graphics panel, I'm going to scale this layer. So I want this text to fit across three different mats. Now, since the main one actually fits in the yellow uh, mat without a problem, I'm going to drag this text to the mat number two, which is the red one, duplicate it and apply another mat, which is the green one in this case. And if I turn on the main text layer and then change the scale to the same amount just move this keyframe a little bit as this one. Everything will fill up every single field as it should. Turn off the mats. Now what's left is to create an animation. So basically what I just did was I simply added keyframes to the text offset and the text scale on every single text array, the large, medium and small first starting in a way that it would fit into individual mats themselves and for the main text and as you can see by moving the text around we kind of let it to settle in at the end of the animation and by playing with the keyframes on position uh, text scale itself we can play with the rotation and so on we simply let the text form itself at the end and when you combine this with all the other layers you get this full complex animation that looks like it's building into itself. It's not the fastest thing to set up or the quickest to render because as you can see the render time spikes up quite a lot potentially because I'm actually recording the screen but this is very flexible and you can create a lot of interesting animations out of it. I hope I managed to explain it well enough and I'll upload the project to Gamroad. We will be able to download it and play with the rig itself and see how everything functions. And as well, I will do like a write-up on my blog where I'll explain the expressions in more details.